morning, everybody, and thanks for joining us for session three of Inside 1080. We've already had two great sessions. We've heard from incoming RI president Sheikh Ahmeta on his key goals for the coming year. And we've also heard from incoming uh, RI director Nikki Scott and the support that we can have for growing Rotary. Last week, Paul Wilkinson, um, our uh, membership team leader, showed us how to uh, grow Rotary, re-energize and retain our members. And then we had uh, Jonathan King, our DG, who's going to be our foundation team leader next year, providing and talking about uh, foundation, which provides the funding behind the service projects that we can uh, that we can use to um, to help our, our uh, communities. You can catch up on uh, those last two sessions by going to rotaryeastanglia.co.uk and then looking for um, online district assembly. This week we're looking at our work abroad, types of projects and how to get involved and then how do we get our message out there and let people know what we do. So first let's hear from uh, Howard Phillips our international team leader, and then I'll ask him to come and join me to discuss it further and uh, take any questions. But first, let's let's hear from Howard. District Governor Jonathan, District Governor-elect Ian, and fellow Rotarians. By way of introduction, my name is Howard Phillips and I'm currently president of Down and Market Rotary in West Norfolk. I've been a member of Rotary for 18 years and served as president once before, as well as chairing various committees over the years. That's enough of that. As the Duke of Edinburgh said, people don't want to hear about you. They want to hear about what you want to do. It's easy for us in the UK to feel comfortable with our lot. But scenes like this exist elsewhere in the world. No matter whether it's natural disaster or man-made conflict, Ordinary people are suffering beyond any level that we can possibly imagine. This is where we can all play our part. I appreciate that the COVID restrictions have played havoc with most of our normal fundraising activities and that not unnaturally, the tendency has been with our limited resources to look inward at helping those who are struggling in our own communities and ignore or perhaps push to the back shelf those in desperate need internationally. I beg of you, if you don't already, to look outward and use the considerable resources of Rotary internationally to help those in need overseas as well. Individual Rotarians often feel powerless to alter things, but believe me, being part of a worldwide humanitarian organisation like ours opens up all sorts of opportunities. Look what's been achieved with polio eradication, for instance. Without the efforts of Rotary, the Bill Gates Foundation would probably not be as generous as they are. So it's not just about raising money, it's all about leadership an organization and now more than ever our global humanitarian role is needed. A classic example from my own club is a project in Belarus headed by Carol Samuel back in 2014 and 2017. The particular area the project was based in was populated by people evacuated after the Chernobyl nuclear plant explosion. These people have very little and live frugally. Korovatichi school was in desperate need of renovation in an area where temperatures can fall well below freezing for considerable periods. Not only do people live in little more than shacks, but the school had no heating and ancient leaky windows. I won't even attempt to describe the toilet facilities. Carol launched a project to improve the school at the District Grants Fair and was successful in bringing on board several clubs and achieving a foundation grant. All the clubs are acknowledged on this plaque mounted on the wall of Korovatichi School. All this from one club in a little old market town in West Norfolk. The message, it can be done. 
So, a little about the international team for the 21-22 Rotary year. I am delighted to say that the team that worked with Robert has agreed to stay on for another year to keep me on the straight and narrow. The team consists in no particular order, Brian Davies, Mark Little, Linda Tempest, Paul Ryle, Bill Redmayne, Colin Boog, Tim Thomas and Malcolm Goodson. And I'm extremely grateful to them all for sticking with me for the coming year. One of the big themes emerging from both district level and nationally is the need for cooperation between clubs within and without district, be that in the UK or overseas. This is where Rotary's strength lies. The ability to work together is vital and we will be doing everything we can to encourage this aspect of our fellowship. Together we have much more clout than individually. This year we have seen some cooperative responses to international disasters. The one that I took particular interest in and Robert has supported in district was the Beirut explosion and the consequent damage to the Carantina Hospital. The hospital is the only public hospital in Beirut, readily accessible for free treatment. The other four hospitals are all private and costly. Given that well over 50% of the population of Beirut live at or below the poverty line, the Carantina was an invaluable resource. We all know that the powers that be in Beirut are bogged down in a mire of corruption and the economy can't sink much lower. This obviously made us wary of sending money. So the Rotary Club of Beirut Cosmopolitan took up the initiative to raise money to rebuild and re-equip the paediatric department of the hospital. The Rotary Club of Putney in London undertook to handle the funds from UK clubs as a safeguard and the money was not released until the foundation grant was in place. So our money was safe. And this is all due to cooperation between clubs. What is, of course, most reassuring is that the auditing of global grants is strict, which is a strong safeguard. Habib Sahar, president of Beirut Cosmopolitan Rotary, had received assurances for what passes for a government in Lebanon that all monies raised for this cause are sacrosanct and totally under the control of Rotary. Incidentally, if you've not heard Habib speak, I urge you to try and secure him for a Zoom talk. He is extremely accomplished and speaks fluent English, having been educated in the UK. There is a video presentation by him on the resources website, rotaryeastanglia.co.uk. Uh, click on the international in the list of resources and then on Zoom meeting 19th of November. The happy outcome of all this cooperation by 160 clubs and districts, which is thought to be a record, is that the global grant of US dollars 391,000 was approved on the 30th of March, having been submitted only on the 20th of February. The money raised will cover the equipment destroyed in the paediatric and neonatal operating theatre, as well as the paediatric ward. Money is still being donated and this will go towards new equipment. The Beirut public uh, project shows the power of cooperation between clubs and districts at home and internationally. The power of Rotary. So how do you find out what other clubs are doing on the international front? A lot of work was put in to develop a database in Excel format that you could access via the rotaryeastanglia.co.uk website by clicking on international, then on the international project gallery. This will download an Excel file drawn up last year showing projects that 1080 clubs are and were involved in at the time. Because of the pandemic, an update has been delayed. Uh, however, once we are well into the new Rotary year, we will in instigate a survey with a view to update being available as quickly as possible. 
if you want to see the original version and are having difficulty accessing it on the website, contact me and I can email it to you. Brian Davis has done a splendid job on the district with care initiative. Two thirds of the clubs in district now take part. If your club is not part of this, I urge you to consider it. It is a superb method of supporting entrepreneurs in developing countries utilizing microfinance. From my own club's experience, the default rate on loans is extremely low. Of the 90 odd loans our club has made, we have only one default for the princely sum of 15 pounds. That's the beauty of the scheme. Small amounts can be lent, therefore any failure will not make your eyes water. In district, we've lent 345,700 pounds, which is helping nearly 48,000 entrepreneurs and has created over 22,000 jobs in developing countries. What I would urge is that you choose what you are investing in carefully. In line with the new environment level of service, please be, bring sustainability into your deliberations before investing in any of the entrepreneurs. If any club would like more information on how Lend With Care works, please contact Brian Davis or me and we will be happy to give a presentation. We continue to support Shelterbox, with whom Tim Thomas is in regular contact. Tim reported to the last international service team meeting that a number of major sites are being set up outside the UK to aid speedier distribution of boxes. The global pandemic has brought about changes in the way Shelterbox works. For instance, boxes to badly hit areas now contain hygiene projects, uh, products such as soap, and washing bowl, uh, in addition to the usual contents. Because of the clampdown on international travel, shelter box have adapted to using local resources and knowledge instead of sending a team automatically from overseas. Around two thirds of District 1080 clubs support shelter box, which, along with other international projects, will feature in our displays at the district forum in October. Mark Little continues his splendid work on modern slavery. If your club has not had the benefit of talk by Mark, please try and find a slot for him to speak. He is on the RIBI speakers list and tells me he's kept very busy speaking to clubs both here and in the USA. Mark's club, Norwich St Edmund, supports an anti-slavery organisation called You Can Free Us, which operates in India. With the aid of clubs all over the UK, they helped to raise £19,000 to buy a 32-seater coach um, to take survivors of sex slavery to one of the three safe houses in operation. Sex slavery is a major problem in India and Norris and Edmund are helping to fund a new safe house in Kolkata. If you are zooming to the grants fair after this assembly session, there will be a presentation on this project. A 30 minute video has been made by Mark and two other Rotary Action Group Against Slavery, that, that's for short, uh, uh, RAGAS board members, which will be available as part of the Volunteer Expo online in early May. Bill Redmayne has been frustrated in his efforts to get New Generation Service Exchange up and running because of the COVID pandemic. It's now been cancelled completely by Rotary International until the next Rotary year, 2022 to 2023, because of the difficulties with international travel. So more on this later in the Rotary year. For those not familiar, New Generation Service Exchange is a short-term international exchange. It's a voluntary service programme for young adults between the ages of 18 and 30. Because there's no action this coming Rotary Year, I'll say no more, but it is something that going forward, we will encourage clubs to consider. As with the new generation service exchange, the fellowship or friendship exchange is also on hold. 
as soon as is practical, we would like to get this up and running too. And as Robert said last year, watch this space. One of my favourite and most cost effective schemes is the Rotary Shoebox. My club supported Wisbeach Rotary in their shoebox efforts a few years ago, and we are now thoroughly converted. When we first started, it was just our members filling boxes. Now we have schools and all sorts of other organisations in our area filling them every year. These boxes mean so much to people in target areas of Eastern Europe who, by our standards, have nothing. Often, a rotary shoebox is the first gift a ch child in that part of the world has ever received, and the joy this brings is tangible. As I say, we get tremendous support from schools, churches and youth groups. It's another good way for Rotary to reach out. Let's hope the new Rotary year will see the dem demise of COVID and allow us all to get back to normal, or the new normal way of life. There are going to be many challenges for us on the international front and we in the international team will do our very best to support clubs who wish to use them rise to them. Remember, we are here to assist you wherever we can if you need to help guidance on an overseas project. The team has a wealth of experience to draw on, so do please contact us if you think we can help. Meanwhile, we will continue to monitor developments, liaise with teams throughout the Rotary world and hopefully feed through to you valuable guidance on overseas projects. That's great. Thank you, um, Howard. Um, perhaps, Howard, you'd like to come back and uh, join me on the screen now for uh, questions. And I'll also ask our DG, Jonathan, to come and join us as well. Can I just remind everybody that um, questions, if you could use the Q&A function on your screen to ask questions, um, and uh, the, the, the chat function is uh, just for panellists, really. So um, uh, please use the Q&A function. So thanks, Howard. Um, one one question we've had already, which is sort of a bit, it's, it's not general, it's very specific to Beirut disaster. Um, and it's come from uh, Elaine and uh, the Diswaveni Club. Um, they've ring fenced some money for the Beirut disaster. Who do they send it to? Right, <clears throat> that, that, that should go to um, uh, Putney Rotary Club in London. Um, their president, uh, Louise McCants Price, is looking after the UK end for submitting the money. Um, if you'd like to contact me, I'll give you all her contact details and uh, she'll look after it for you and make sure it gets to the right place. Great. Thanks. OK. Um, I thought I'd, I'd, I'd warm you up with an easy one. And... Uh, <laughs> um, how do we find um, potential projects abroad? Now, there, there, there's a question. Um, we will be doing the research there. Um, it, it's a matter of, you know, keeping our nose to the grindstone and, and, and keeping an eye on what's happening internationally. Um, I, I have to say I'm a little naive on this front at the moment, but I'm still learning. And uh, I've, I've spent an awful lot of time trawling the internet and trawling various bits of correspondence from uh, uh, various people uh, in the UK and overseas. So it, it, it's just a case of building up a picture. Um, the Beirut thing came about part, well, I took an interest because, you know, that, that was so, I happened to know Beirut, having worked there at one time and it's, it, it, it um, it was so devastating. I, I felt I had to do something. Um, there was a bit of pushback uh, from my club, you know, because, um, you know, the government in Beirut is not well known for uh, being on the straight and narrow. It's quite a corrupt place. Um, but with all the safeguards in place, uh, we felt that it was, it was worth supporting. And as I mentioned in my talk, Habib Sahar, who is the president of uh, Beirut Cosmopolitan Rotary, is a fantastic speaker. He's a great guy and he really is worth speaking to. Um, 
and it was just reassurance all around, really. And then when Louise, you know, had, had, had started the campaign uh, to look after the money from the UK clubs, um, we all felt reassured and it's turned out for the best. Can I, can I just add to that, that um, if you went into my Rotary and researched into the Rotary Club Central, you will find posted on there um, projects and you can search, say, on water and it will list many, many projects around the world relating to water. So if it's slavery, you have searched slavery and you'll be amazed how many there are. The hard thing will be trying to focus on one that suits you um, <laughs> best. So, yeah, there's a lot out there. Yes, thank great. you for that. Yeah, great. Thanks, Jonathan. Um, there's, there's obviously information that somebody's asked how to get in touch with, with uh, to start shoebox collections. So perhaps on, on the website, um, Howard, we could update that with some of these things with, with contact details. That's probably the easiest thing to do. Will uh, do. The way, the way that we operate, if I might just butt in yep. there, um, the, the it depends, well, You've got, to, you've got to have a decent number of shoeboxes for a collection to be made by the shoebox people. Um, but the way that we operate, and you saw my car just now, that was after just one collection from a local church. Uh, and that there was only room for me to sit in the car and drive it at the end of it. Um, but uh, the, the main gathering point in, in our part of the world is in Peterborough, uh, behind the hospital. And... Um, uh, that's where I take all our boxes to, and it just just makes it more efficient. It's only about a forty minute drive for me, um, but you know, shoebox will arrange for for collection. So, um, and the purchase of the shoeboxes, I'm sure, I, I don't know if everybody knows how it works, but you actually purchase the boxes. They come as flat pack, uh, and there is a request on the lid for donors to attach a two pound coin to help with the transport. Now, we we don't press that one. Um, we're happy to bear the expense of buying the boxes, but you might want to take that in. And it, actually it's self funding in the end. You don't have to do anything. It's quite, quite good. Um, and, and people are very generous, we found. But, you know, I'm more than, I'll put something, I'll have a word with Ian, we'll put something up on the website about it. Presumably that will be rotaryeastanglia.co.uk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, I, I, th I think, um, uh, oh, actually, good good comment and, and thanks, thanks, Bill. And, and thanks to uh, Jonathan for bringing up um, Rotary Club Central and my Rotary because, you know, they're, they're important things and they're a great resource in terms of knowing where, where potential products, uh, projects are and where the need might be. Um, I've had a, a comment. It's more of a comment than a question, I guess, but probably something just to, to make a comment on. Um, just emphasise the fact that um, international projects don't just have to be about us giving money to something out there. Um, you know, it, it could be school uniforms, it could be spectacles, it could be sewing machines, it could be wheelchairs, it could be bicycles. I mean, there, there's all sorts of different things, isn't there? So it doesn't have to be about just thinking of sending money out somewhere but it actually sending things that we have to be of use there uh, is that uh, is that still our thinking as well uh, yes certainly i, I, I in fact um uh, when, um until covid hit we were in the preparation stages of uh, supporting one of the king's lynn clubs who uh, have made arrangements to collect old tools unused tools um which would to go out to the Philippines. Uh, and in the past, our club has supported a, a, a training college, a vocational training college in Uganda, um, which is a charity. Uh, and um, the UK end happens to be based in a village near us. And uh, we collected tools for that, uh, which were very gratefully received. There's a, there's a, there's a point here and it's probably Good that we've got um, our DG on in his in his new role as well as foundation team leader. Um, about uh, I'm, I'm not quite sure exactly what the question is about difficulties getting cooperating organisation, which is a requirement for district grants. But it's it's um, 
it's a good point, isn't it? That actually, if clubs work together on projects, then you know, using foundation grants, you know, can actually um, maximise and leverage more money and make a greater impact um, where we are. And and, yeah. and 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 so, you know, it's I think I think something to look forward, looking forward. You know, if actually, if we start thinking about who else can we work with in Rotary rather than just you know, doing the project ourselves, you know, could actually make more impact. I don't know if you agree with me on that. Both of you, there's one to both of you. Well, firstly, yes, I agree totally, Ian. And also with the collaboration with our neighbouring districts, we can, we've got a bigger audience to work with and the more the merrier, I think, um, because it shares the workload as well and, and the outreach to other clubs. Yeah, that's, it was the point I was trying to make in that talk is that, you know, uh, together we work better. It's the, the more more people are involved, uh, more yeah. clubs involved in a project, uh, the better. Lightens the load and, uh, and uh, you know, make, makes a foundation grant more likely. We've got um, we've got uh, some things coming up now with people with ideas of other equipment that could be used, which I think um, you know we can take going forward. Where we're just just sort of running out of time. And and thank you. Um, I see a, a little nudge from Derek, but I have to say, Derek, in big letters on the bottom of my sheet of paper here, it says, "Don't forget the grants fair, which is coming up in just a moment." So, in terms of a source for projects that you might want to get involved in, Absolutely. then the grants fair is there, um, and uh, and hopefully we will see lots of you across on on our other channel. I mean, you know. This is technology working, isn't it? That not only do we have an assembly channel, but we also have a grants fair channel. So we hope to see many of you there. So I don't know, any any final um, comments before um, we, we move on? Um, DG and uh, Howard? Not for me. No, I think, think you've heard enough of my dulcet tones. <laughs> Thank Great. you, Howard, and good luck with your new venture. Thank you very much. Yeah, thanks for being part of the team. Okay, if I could ask you both to, to leave the stage, as they say, and uh, I'd like to move on um, and invite uh, Malcolm Bouge to, to join us. And, and Malcolm, many of you will know Malcolm, but um, in the coming year, Malcolm is taking over the public image team lead. And uh, we look forward to, to hearing what, what Malcolm has to to say and uh, Malcolm has uh, our friend Phil Dyer with him shortly and he'll introduce him so I pass over to Malcolm with the the title how we get the message out there over to you. Thank you Ian and uh, good morning everyone um, as you know my name is Malcolm Bugue but if you live in Suffolk it's Boog uh, but uh, I am currently the DGN and uh, in my, also in my second year as president of the Great Yarmouth Haven Club. Uh, in my business life, I uh, ran a public relations company for several years and retired about 11 years ago. Today, uh, the word wrote, when the word Rotary is mentioned, it seems a lot of people uh, have little perception of who we are, what we stand for, where we are, or what excellent charitable work we do. The Rotary brand itself has existed for uh, over 166 years, and not so long ago, if a, the very presence of a Rotary badge on a lapel identified the bearer as a person belonging to a well-known and highly regarded organization dedicated to helping the less fortunate, both in the local community and much further afield. For an organization that has over 35,000 clubs worldwide with well over a million members, that donates millions of pounds and dollars to good causes every year, that first statement is quite an alarming situation. With a decreasing public awareness of our activities, the consequences speak for themselves. If the public at large uh, doesn't, doesn't know what we can offer, then there will be less and less opportunities for us to provide our support to good causes. The available benefits from all our good work will gradually reduce and eventually uh, will probably cease. Without the appropriate identity, there comes less and less interest for potential new members. And without a flow of new members, Rotary as we know it will surely die. 
to me, this shouts an urgent need uh, for us to look at ourselves and how together we can take steps to improve our awareness to Joe Public. Let's embrace developing more interaction between all of our individual clubs and make a big effort to generate an impact that puts it right. A good public image also has a knock-on effect with membership. Put simply, if we can create the right image to the outside world, inquiries from, from potential new members will undoubtedly increase at a much faster pace. We need all the right exposure we can get to help put our uh, public image back on the stage that it so rightly deserves. I think that's possible. Uh, it, I'm under no illusions, it's not going to be easy, but I do think it's possible. So where do we start? <clears throat> well, let's first return to the basics and consider some searching questions. Here are there's a few examples. Do you make efforts to keep in touch on, a, on and on friendly terms with your local media, newspapers, journals, radio and TV? Do you invite editors or journalists periodically to club luncheons or club events? Do you write and distribute uh, uh, regular press releases? Do you write and distribute interesting rotary, rotary articles? Do you use social media? Do you place a plaque outside your meeting venue, identifying your Rotary Club meets there and when? Do you have a club website? If you do, do you give a clear contact name with details so potential new members can talk directly to a Rotarian at your club? When you support an organisation, do you ask them to display a sign at their premises and even their station on their stationery to clearly, indi clearly indicate Rotary support has been given? When you are at a club, a club organised event, do you wear clothes emblazoned with rotary? Do you have a railway station or a port, etc., where you are? And have you inquired into placing a plaque in the arrivals area, advertising where and when you meet with full contact details? Do you discuss rotary with friends, relatives, and any business or social contacts? Do you wear your rotary badge at every opportunity? Do you hold any event? that is specifically target, targeted at recruiting new members. The list is endless, and you can add to it continuously. Over the next few weeks, I intend talking to all clubs to see if we can establish a network group of public image representatives from each club. Each group member will be nominated by their own club, and ideally be enthusiastic about making a difference to our Rotary public image. We can meet regularly on Zoom and discuss ways to improve and increase our public image and be creative going forward. Individual members can share details of the successes their club is having with public image, so all can benefit from it. Awareness of other club successes uh, will, enable us, will enable all clubs to consider doing sim similar themselves. And therefore, all of us will be walking together down the same path. Finally, I can only hope that my brief talk here today has given you some food for thought. And that thought will en engender all our Rotary tomorrows. Thank you for listening. And I look forward to meeting you face to face in the not too distant future. I am now delighted to introduce to you Rotar Rotarian Phil Dyer who is Assistant Public Image Coordinator at Rotary GBNI. Phil is going to show us where to go for our public image resources, all the resources you need to successfully promote Rotary. Phil, over to you. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you very much for that uh, warm welcome. Uh, looking forward to this. Uh, there's going to be a, a little bit of uh, repetition in my presentation today, but that is not a bad thing. So let me just share the screen. Uh, good PowerPoint in hand. So let's see, we can see that. 
I hope. Off we go. So the critical importance of public image. Just uh, rearrange something. Yeah, critical importance of public image. I said, my name's Phil Dyer. Uh, we won't dwell on that. I think that public image is mission critical for us as Rotarians. And I'm going to tell you uh, why um, in this presentation. So here we go. Um, public image, the definition, uh, the opinion that many people have of a person or organisation. Like I say, there's going to be some repetition here, but in some circles, this could be it. Now, I don't want to dwell on that. I love my rotary career uh, and my club, uh, uh, my club uh, in Prescott in Merseyside. We are a very traditional club and I enjoy the rotary that we do. But sometimes there is a gap between reality and perception. If rotary is all about telling our story, what story is being written right now? So have a think about that as I go through these next slides. We are at a, I think, pivotal point coming out of this pandemic to make a huge difference. This isn't a choice. This is something that has been forced upon us. And is potentially the tradition of Rotary holding us back? Now, I like, as I've said, I like my rotary career and my, and my club rota uh, rotary. I really enjoy it. But are we always as vibrant and as exciting as we could be? Remember the old Yorkshire adage, and I can say this as a Yorkshireman, if you always do what you've always did, then you'll always get what you always got. Malcolm touched on this in his uh, talk earlier, and I think there's a massive synergy between membership, public image, and I've called it their service and foundation. The better the public image, the more people we engage in membership, the bigger the service projects that we can put on. The bigger the projects, the better the public image, the more membership we get, and it goes round in that circle. Invariably, in the clubs that we are part of now we need volunteers to assist us to do the projects that we put on so never more so is public image fundamental the starting block of what we do if we have exciting vibrant public image then we will have more membership opportunities to put on bigger and better service and foundation projects but today I can hear you cringe already. We want to talk or I want to talk about the brand because I think we have a phenomenal brand. And as it has been said a number of times during this morning's uh, presentation, we are a global organisation. And as you would expect, we have a number of resources that we can pull on to help us be uh, more vibrant and more exciting. So to set the scene, we live in a visual world. There is no doubt about it. Screen time is increased, never more so in the last year because of Zoom. We are all Zoom experts. And people buy with their eyes. Remember that we live in a media-saturated world. High-definition, computer-enhanced, colour-saturated images are everywhere. We can post on social media and on the web. And this can be broadcast from Liverpool to Lima in seconds. We are part of a global organisation and we need to sometimes remember that because it's the perception of what we do at the grassroots in our clubs that can be seen across the globe. We need to respect our brand with consistency. Now we've all recognised uh, these brands that I'm going to put up on screen now. I'm not even going to introduce them, but these are global organisations, like them or loathe them, with consistent branding across their whole organization. So I think we need to be seen that we're open. We're coming out of this pandemic and we need to be seen that we are 
and I use the term open for business. I'm st still in business, so I feel comfortable saying that, but we need to be um, alert and alive to, uh, to our communities and we need to be pr promoting ourselves in the most consistent way with the branding that we have. As I touched on earlier, I think this could be our finest hour. And I think we've got an opportunity now coming out of this pandemic to bring about real change and momentum in Rotary by telling people what we do and doing it with the, the correct branding and the correct messaging in order <clears throat> that we achieve, excuse me, in order that we achieve the results that we want. So let's get on to some nuts and bolts of the Rotary brand. And to set the scene, here are the changes that have been made to the Rotary brand over the last, uh, over uh, well, 116 years we've been in uh, an organization. So on the bottom in the left, we have the first wheel and at the end on the right is the current uh, Rotary mark of excellence, or for those that want to abbreviate it, the MOE. Above it, with the word Rotary in white, that is our logo. It is our master brand signature, and it should be used um, for all of our external marketing. So just put it in context, why did we change from the blue and yellow wheel, often referred to now as the legacy wheel? Well, it was pretty nondescript. We all knew what it was, but not many other people did. And you can see other organisations there, well-known organisations that have their current branding. Even the RNLI, the Royal National Lifeboat Institute, writes lifeboats underneath their, underneath their logo. So there is no doubt. And this is with the word Rotary. So it stands out prominent. I'll just go back. There we go. And then forward. It makes an incredible difference. And it says who we are are so as, as i've touched on earlier this is our master brand it comes in a couple of flavors uh you can have it as a simplified version uh which i personally prefer uh, which takes the word rotary international out of the wheel as i've touched on again this is the mark of excellence uh, this can be used also but it should always be used in sight of the uh, main rotary logo with the word rotary there just thought I'd touch on the serve to change lives internal theme and i stress the word internal there this is the 2021 22 internal theme and it is a call of action for us as rotarians uh, this should not be used in any external uh, marketing effort at all uh, ever anywhere it is an internal theme for us and this is an internal uh, presentation today so that's why it's on the screen and in the bottom right -hand corner of my presentation uh, but it is considered um, that it would dilute our brand uh, we have uh, we have the brand and we don't need to bring about a yearly change it is uh, a call to action for us so here is the old logo with a big cross through it and it's time to change this logo is now eight years old, unbelievably, and we're still using it left, right and centre. Uh, so we need to make uh, changes. Now, I'm not saying that you need to change absolutely everything. So if you've got your original bell that you use in your club meetings when you go back later this year, totally acceptable. It is social media, print media, banners, flyers, anything that promotes us where we need to be using the... Um, the new branding like i say if you nip down to ford today and buy a new ford puma you get a new ford badge automatically it doesn't come with an old ford badge you can't buy it so we need to use the new master brand signature and i can hear you all crying out now and saying well where do we get this from phil where is it well we are a global organization and we have resources at my rotary uh, rotary.org and you log into your account you can log into the brand center which is a great resource uh for all new um 
all, all you people out there that want to know about branding and logos and how to use it, it is phenomenal. So we have quickly, you would go to manage brand sensor and in there, there is a section there which shows you what you can download. Excuse me. It always does that, doesn't it? Live TV and that. The most important document is the voice and visual identity guidelines. Uh, 2019 to 2020 is the latest version. Uh, ideal night table reading, 56 pages of fun packed information. Uh, worth a read, definitely. But... Um, in the brand center, you can go to logos and download your club or your district logo. Click on logos and then template and then club logo template. So there's a few key clicks here and you are presented with a screen here. This is a condensed version of the screen where you get the option of writing in your club. So uh, we're going to go through for my club Prescott here. So we can write it beneath, which is the preferred location, uh, but perfectly acceptable, you can write above. So Prescott Rotary Club. And I, I personally would try and dissuade you from using the word club, as it sounds a little bit maybe old fashioned or a little bit elitist, and we try to get away from that. So we call ourselves Rotary Prescott. Here's the simplified version without Rotary International written within the wheel. And of course, it comes in a number of colours to shoot, suit the application that you are using your logo for. So we've got Azure Blue, uh, we have Black, and of course, we have White. Now, remember, when you download the white logo, it's a white logo on a white screen, so you can't see it. And even Rotary International write you a little red message there to say it's white on white. Phil, you can't see it. But when you press download, uh, you will download a, uh, a file with the correct um, the, the, the correct white uh, logo there. First of all, uh, I'm just going to just mention this. When you download, you get the PDF option first. But it says on the left there that you need to refresh your browser to continue. This is a quirk of the website. And if you refresh your browser, the two grey boxes there for JPEG and PNG will suddenly go blue and allow you to download them. So uh, you can download in JPEG and PNG as well. You can also create a um, lockup template, uh, which we'll just cover very briefly. And this is really useful if you're doing a project. And we've talked about the Rotary Shoebox scheme already today. So um, this template allows you to insert a logo or some text for Shoebox program. So if you are doing a project um, with a partner, this type of logo is really useful because you can put your club or your district on the left with the Rotary logo and the vertical line and your partner organization are located on the right. Uh, this is a change that was brought about in early uh, 2021. Uh, and is a, a sort of a change to the um, to the, um, the 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 logo rules. Uh, we were allowed uh, to place the uh, club to the right hand side, and I have to say I use that quite a lot. But that now has been um, you are suggested that you don't do that and use that for a partner organisation or a project title. So it would be Rotary Prescott on the left and your partner shoebox uh, program on the right of the master brand signature. So hopefully, I know that was a whistle-stop tour, but it goes through the, um, uh, the, the, uh, the logo situation, and it will hopefully stop you uh, using the old logo, because it's actually easier nowadays to go to the brand sensor and download the correct logo than it is to troll the internet and look for the wrong one. Quickly moving on, and I know we're rushed for time today, uh, but we are a global organisation and the Brand Centre holds more tools in the toolbox, uh, of course. Um, and we'll just touch on the Rotary People of Action campaign. Uh, this is on the left-hand side of the Brand Centre when you go in and you can download logos, Rotary People of Action. Uh, here we go with the logo. Comes in a few colourways. 
you can download it in Azure Blue as before, black and white. It's a very similar process. You can't customize this, uh, but you can download it. And I have to say, um, if anything says anything about Rotary, People of Action certainly does. And I would urge you to use this particular logo uh, where you can on your social media and marketing going forward. Very quickly touching on uh, graphic design, uh, because we've not necessarily had photo opportunities to work with over the last uh, few um, uh, um, weeks and months, uh, because we haven't been able to necessarily put the projects on that we would have liked. Just wanted to remind you that graphics, um, paint, paint a, a, a picture paints a thousand words. And if you haven't got a correct picture, then a graphic might be the solution for you. As I said earlier, people buy with their eyes. So here are a few ideas that you might be able to do with graphics uh, for projects, membership, uh, to tell uh, the communities that we work in what we are doing and that we are, as I said earlier, open for business. So join me and change the world. Uh, this is a billboard I put up on the um, the main um, A580. Um, only kidding. It's a graphic that was put out on social media. Uh, that's me on the stepladder. Not really. Uh, here's another one you could do uh, with a, bu a bus stop. Again, it's not a real bus stop. It's a virtual bus stop. Uh, is it time for you to get involved? Mail rotaryprescott.co.uk. Uh, it doesn't always have to be about Rotary. Uh, here was a little happy Easter just to remind people that we are there and we are active and we are doing something rather than nothing. 23rd of February is a big day for uh, Rotary. It is uh, World Rotary Day. So here's Mr. Spaceman. Uh, he's, he's considering joining. Uh, and uh, this was a graphic that was put out in our district. And here's another one for uh, supporting the environment, uh, which is the next avenue of focus from the 1st of July. Uh, so that uh, hopefully just gives you a few ideas what you can do with the brand. It doesn't have to be all about uh, photographs, uh, but it's a matter of making sure that we've got exciting and vibrant uh, communications going on uh, in our districts, in our clubs and in our communities. So moving on. Uh, all good presentations have takeaways. Unfortunately uh, for me, it is not a real takeaway. These are uh, these are public image takeaways today. And here we have the first one, brand. Not necessarily brand your cattle, but make sure we brand our social media correctly. Make sure we're using the master brand correctly identified with your club or district name underneath it. And it makes us look part of a global organization which we are use great photographs we all have a smartphone in our pockets now it's a tv studio and we need to be aware of that uh, you can take 10 photographs and only use one and that is the photograph you you know you should be putting out on social media and using in your your marketing if you're feeling a little bit braver video works a treat and uh, a video is the new photograph. If you have an opportunity to use video, uh, please do so. And lastly, consistency is key. We are a global organization and using the correct brand is key to our social media membership project, social media membership project. We go around in the circle again. It's all about consistency. So I hope that was uh, okay for you. Uh, thumbs up from me. Are there any questions? Thank you very much. That was great, Phil. Um, I bring Malcolm back as well, if you'd like to come back, and um, also Jonathan, I think, if you'd like to come back. Um, thank you, Phil, for that. And uh, I just point out to, to everybody that... Um, Phil is also president of Prescott Rotary at the moment and assistant coordinator for public image. He works full time and he still had the time to come and join us this morning. So really appreciate that, Phil. And thank you very much. You're very welcome.
Um, I, it was interesting actually watching watching the questions as we went through because as the questions came up, you answered them, and, oh, and anyone anyone would think we put this together in a sort of a constructed way. So, yeah. well, <laughs> thank you, thank you for that. Um, I think I think there's a consistent theme through the last three weeks, and I'm sure it will go to our next session as well. Um, the the use of my rotary because people are still saying. Where can we download the logos? Well, you know, if you, if you go to my Rotary and then the Brand Centre, that's where it all is, isn't it, uh, Phil? It is. Yes, it's all the the, the Brand Centre within uh, the sort of uh, membership. Uh, sorry, the uh, Rotarian section of uh, uh, Rotary org. When you download, uh, go into my Rotary. Uh, the Brand Centre is a great resource. Uh, there's images and videos uh and the logo templates that you can uh, you can download and it is so easy to do it is actually easier to use the brand center and do it right than it is to do it wrong and look on google and pick up the wrong image i think one one more one more sort of uh question coming out from from a few people is about leaflets um I know in terms of using a lot of paper, that, that's the question whether we should be using a lot of paper, but whether we have sort of consistent across the district leaflets promoting rotary. Um, and, uh, you know, the, the issue with that, I think, is probably how do we get some consistency? But we, we do have resources for that as well, I think, don't we, Phil? We do, yeah. There's a there's a couple of options on the brand sensor. There is a quite a nice uh, trifold um, um option uh, which folds into three uh, you can <coughs> excuse me you can download that uh, and customize it for your particular club you're even able to adjust some of the images because uh, I have to say the template that is presented to you is a little bit American centric uh, so you can put some UK based images on there or some graphics for that matter and upload them as a picture file um, and it's saved in my rotary so you uh, don't need to do a massive print run uh, uh, it outputs a PDF ready for a printer to print off, uh, or if you only want a few, uh, you can print them at home. Uh, so that's a, a really viable option nowadays. Great. And if, if you want to know about that right away, then you need to come to the uh, existing public image team leader. Um, who is he? Oh, that's me. Um, and <laughs> but so uh, Mal Malcolm, Malcolm, Malcolm will be working on that as well. Um, I mean, there's going to be loads of questions on this and we're, we're running fast out of time. So um, Malcolm did say that uh, we're going to have some sessions and I think some um, some workshops would be would be the answer, wouldn't they? Um, I, I, I know Phil has very kindly uh, said that he, you know, if we if we can sort of shoo him in somewhere, he would come along and join us for a workshop because I no, think no um, Happy it, it's, it's the, the breadth of experience that you have in, in putting together those images because as you say, people buy with their eyes, um, and and that's what we need to do. There are questions about who do we target on social media. Um, well, you know, who do you want to target on social media? Hmm. I think, but you yeah, know, the sort of images it. that you've you've shown us are the sort of things that will really catch the imagination. Um, any uh, any ideas, Mark, Malcolm, on on you know going forward in terms of these types of sessions that we need to have? Well, um, yes. Um, if I may just say one thing, what, what's happened this morning is just demonstrates that um, uh, what uh, uh, how the Rotary uh, GB and I work closely together, and all the resources are there right behind us. So, and um, we work hand, uh, work hand in glove. So uh, we should have the tools that we can go forward in uh, what we want to do. Now, the, um, what I've suggested about uh, um, a member from every club being on a committee it is will be like a workshop. We can discuss every aspect of, of public image and we can look for ways, creative ways that we can go forward. Uh, you know, you mentioned social media. Uh, we can throw that into the pot and say, hey, what, how can we use this to our best advantage? What you do, et cetera, et cetera and come to a conclusion and try and imply it, apply it, sorry. So um, the workshops, are, I think, are a really good idea. We can, we can get the, uh, the views of clubs throughout the district. Great. Well, I'm aware that we're, we're running over, over time. Um, any, any final comments, uh, DG, before I wrap up? Um, in, well, I think a, special th special <laughs> thanks for Phil to, to joining us. And I, I've taken a takeaway from what he said about tradition. Is it holding us back? 
ask yourself that ask your club that because in many cases it is and some of the clubs are very dynamic and it isn't holding them back so that's all i'd ask and of course you said my rotary my rotary my rotary people yeah. don't realize how great that is give it a try yeah yeah, there's some great resources out there. So um, I'll ask uh, Malcolm and uh, Jonathan to leave the stage by closing their video. Um, once again, a great thank you to, to Phil for, for your time today. Um, no and um, we look forward to seeing you again. Um, we, as, as you know, we have to uh, fly off now and um, go to our other channel um, because um, I'm, I'm hoping that you're or going to join us on the other channel and uh, see us for the grants fair. Um, it's wonderful, isn't it, that this technology allows us to do that. So, um, And our last session of Inside 1080 is on Thursday, not Saturday. It's on Thursday at 7.30, Thursday the 29th, when we'll be looking at uh, youth and, and our new area of focus, so our new uh, district team of the environment so that's going to be a, another great session so i hope you're all going to join us then so um as they say see you on the other side and thank you <laughs>